Let's talk about cupcakes. They are the newest, hottest controversy. We always have a controversy about something that used to be okay. Now it is cupcakes. A Seattle school is banning cupcakes in elementary schools. Why are they doing it? Well, we've got some info for you. Uh, basically, they don't want kids to be fat. That's sort of the short of it. So they are allowing food can only be served at three classroom celebrations per year. Uh, the decision was based on nutritional factors and economics. It's not healthy for a cupcake party to be thrown for every student on their birthday because if you're in a class of 30, that means you're having 30 cupcakes a year, <laughs> which is basically one cupcake every 10 days. I don't think it's that bad. Uh, and not all families can afford to send treats to school for a birthday celebration, leading some students to feel slightly left out. So I guess maybe that one has some validity. I think making some kind of ec economic argument sort of makes sense. But the idea that we're taking away these cupcakes, I know, I get it. The sugar we talk about. Yeah, these the reasons weight. are all rubbish. Yeah, you're not on the, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get all the stuff and we talk about high fructose corn syrup and all the horrible stuff we're eating and everyone's getting diabetes and all this stuff. I get all That's that. That's not the reason. Go. The reason is teachers unions know better than anyone. You don't give rooms of 30 kids all this concentrated <laughs> sugar at one time and expect to do your job. It's hell, it's hell. Yeah, so that's really what's going on here. Yes, they want to control these kids. They're and screaming little imps, it's horrible. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's disgusting, they're all hopped up on crack. No, you can't Says the it. one father on the panel. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting that they said in the article, you know, they encourage parents to bring in other things like erasers, which is hilarious to me. I guarantee if I, growing up, had had a parent bring in something that wasn't edible, I would have found a way to eat it. I mean, <laughs> and the entire point of going to school is having birthday parties like right. once a week. And so. in fairness also, a lot of kids are born in summer, so it's not 30. Now, I was born on Labor Day, and my I'm, I'm a Virgo, uh, which means I'm a lot of work, but I'm worth it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the fact is that uh, well, my first day of school in first grade was my birthday. And I told the teacher, it's my birthday, and she thought I was lying. I never got a cupcake party. It wasn't until months later she found out I had been telling the truth, and I had a retroactive one, and I, I, it was reparations. And yeah. that means a lot to me. Uh, but no, it, 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 there are other practical ways. You can give bring in grapes, you know? Like you can do other things for a party. You can sing a song or do something special to, to not teach kids for 20 minutes. Right, so you're sort of down with the general idea this I'm really because of the, the sugar, general but don't idea, you think you not be, it's not, it's not It's not because of the nutritional factor. They're not afraid that one cupcake party or even 30 cupcake parties is gonna cause obesity. I'm more worried about what the kids are eating at home. Low income families can't afford a healthy meal. Uh, you know, I, I was in Mississippi making this film for PBS and, and you know, in so many communities, there's no grocery stores in rural America, and poor families get all their food from the dollar store or the gas station. Right, which is all processed. But and it's not. The, that's not. Yeah, that's not the school's responsibility. This is all about sugar and hopped up little crankheads. Okay, so if it is about that, don't you still think you lose something by not having that? Like, if I think back to my elementary school days. Those were great, like that somebody would come in with the cupcakes, everybody, like you lose something if we don't let kids celebrate the way kids, guess what, there's sugar when they're adults too. So I get it, you're trying to set some but The teachers don't have to deal with that. Right, so I get it, but don't you think they're losing something? Like you're just losing something about growing up if you can't eat freaking cupcakes in school? Yes. Defend the cupcakes, kids, please. Well, no, kids will find a way to eat cupcakes anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying, I guess that's a, that's a terrible argument because that's kind of what people who are against gun control say, but I, I just feel like cupcakes are gonna happen regardless. Maybe have one party a month for everyone born in that month and you have a, a condensed cupcake mm -hmm. and you can have it at, uh, you know, at 3 p.m. instead of having it in the middle of the day. I'm just looking at solutions here so we don't just stop eating cupcakes. Right, so you want the cupcakes. The teachers union would say, you know what, give them a cupcake as they're leaving school. Well, here, I'm, I get say, out of here and, and, and take you know, a cupcake. I'm happy to see one small, tiny victory for a teachers union somewhere yep. in America, but I think a very practical solution is uh, the end of every month, you, have, you take one hour at the end of every month and have your cupcake party for all the kids who had a birthday that month. Uh, that way the poor kids aren't singled out for more shaming if they can't bring in cupcakes. You just do it for every kid who had a birthday in March. We're doing it, and we're doing it in the 30 minutes before we put you on the bus home. <laughs> right, that doesn't bode well for the bus drivers. No, it doesn't. Or then they have a very powerful union too. Well, parents um, can do, the parents can deal with the sugar high and exactly. at home. Right, they can just lock them in the basement and do what they want with them. Do you guys think we're, we're gonna ever have like a bounce back against this health conscious thing that we have going on right now? Because we are talking about it so much that I do fear that we're gonna have this weird thing where suddenly everyone's gonna wanna eat awful stuff Wait, you all fear the time. it? I feel like that's actually that's the best the possible scenario is that we well, actually jump back to fast I, food. Yeah, you th you'd be happy. No, I mean, I, obviously that's a, that's a problem too, but I, I feel like we, we might be a little too stringent at times. I don't know, I'm not raising a child, I'm also, um, making my own poor dietary choices for myself, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> but isn't it isn't like it like the gun kids. thing, as you just said? Like it's to me, so you know, every time there's a shooting, somehow the gun sales go up. Yes. And I think that's partly what 
what's happening here. We keep telling people to eat well, and then everything shows that they're eating worse. Is there some weird, what is it with the humans? The only way to stop a bad man with a cupcake is a good man with a cupcake. <laughs> That's it's amazing the, what an equalizer type two diabetes can be. You know, and I think unfortunately it's gonna, t you know, it, for me as a child it took sitting next to my grandfather with lung cancer holding his hand when he died for me to know I was never gonna eat cig take cigarettes. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of kids are gonna have to see the suffering of their parents and grandparents from having an unhealthy lifestyle to really realize it. And even then they might not because food's a drug. And comfort food is a really nice way of, uh, of phrasing something, but what it really is is unhealthy habits. And it's not about changing diet, it's about changing habits. And that's a lot harder. Yeah. That's why we talk about this on the show because we're trying to get a little, a little information across. I, of course, am gonna still eat cupcakes openly and freely.